activate about three, two, I would say we have a long one, zero, really. All right. You know, there's some serious people waiting for this show tonight. It seems to be one of the hot ones for tonight. Uh, the DLPs are there waiting and queued up. <laughs> you know, it's interesting when we have a DLP show, the DLP is kind of rough. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> so, good afternoon, everyone. All right. Oh, whoa, whoa. The number is going fast. So, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming on to the Debrief TV show. As always, it's a pleasure to have each and every one of you. Well, we debrief. Are we happy at another week with the Debrief team? I'm your host, Kimar Safri. We have Simon Aline, another host of the Debrief TV show. We also have Kimar Stewart host of the Debrief TV show as well. We have an interesting guest with us today, one that has been making rounds. Wow, these numbers are going fast. But as I always like to say, give us a minute break while we share this link to you um, so that the individuals here could also share the link with those who are waiting. If you are sending out fast and furious, please, we ask you that you will share the link with those that are uh, coming on as well so that they too can share the link with their um, families and friends. So we ask that you to take the time. We're using technology. Um, so we do we do ask that um, in using the technology that you bear with us, Kimar, I just sent the link to the chat. Please pass that link on to Mr. Hewitt so that he can send that link to who he needs to send it to as well. If you have to send it out. Well, but as always, it is a pleasure um, we hope everyone is keeping safe, especially in this time when uh, we, you know, we have this COVID situation on our hands. But we also ask that you would also um, you know, take heed to the protocols that the government has put in place. It is for our benefit. Uh, we also ask that you would also take heed to the fact that we, have, we are in an active hurricane season. And in an active hurricane season, you're going to ask that, you know, Obviously, there are certain things that the people will want you to do in a hurricane season. Um, I see you guys a new link that has a photo. There are certain things that the people will want you to do in a hurricane season, which call for making sure you're prepared, hurricane prepared rather, or hurricane ready. Get your grab and go kit, get your stock up on your items that you need to be stocked up on, and be ready for the hurricane season. So, as I said, we, we said be ready like Freddy. <laughs> if that's yep. it, that's it. And so we're asking each and every one of you, I just want to post the, the thing over to some groups right now. But we're asking you to, you know, put into perspective certain things as we go into the hurricane season and, um, you know, knowing what can happen. Put some things aside for some friends and some other people that may not have it as well. But we, are going, we have an interesting show for you tonight. Um, as I said, I'm just taking two minutes of your time to send out the group shares, but we're asking you to like the group, like the debrief so that you can always know when we go live on the debrief TV show. So we're asking that you please like our um, show because we always come to you. We see some people popping on here, Shane, and the others. Um, we know that yeah, we, you know, everyone. we always have a good show. We're waiting on Jeremy Beckford, who is always late for somehow, some way. I hope you don't be late for your funeral. But he's so always so there. Although they got some smoke rolls up there now, right? You went to Celestia recently? You got some nice uh, rolls up there, Marky, man. Nah, not too far for me to drink, dude. I ain't driving that far and for any reason, <laughs> right? Um, But yeah, so good evening, everyone. We also want to take this time out to say good evening to our guests. This guest have been making rounds in the media as it pertains mm. to his willingness to or he's been asked <clears throat> seeking to run on the democratic labor party in the upcoming um is it it will be the upcoming um conference annual conference yeah mm -hmm. annual conference <clears throat> to become the president and obviously he would also be challenging <coughs> sorry verla de pisa in the race of presidency we don't know if other people will join because i've heard i've heard some other names being thrown out out there 
But let's see, he's up front and center already saying that he has interest in running for um, taking the presidency and taking this country forward. A good night to some of our early viewers, Kirk, uh, Esther, we, good night to you guys. Yeah, so night, we want to start the ball rolling because we know people have been eagerly waiting for this show and we are here to bring the show to that debrief for people. Now, good afternoon to you, Mr. Hewitt, uh, Reverend Guy, rather. Uh, as I said, I'm going to get accustomed to that. I'm happy for you all to call me Guy, but yeah. good evening. Happy to be here. Thank you. Now, um, but German is coming on, so just let me give our late dragger a minute or two. Well, he, he's he can't seem to find his camera, but anyway, the we were hearing the conversation around you wanting to run as president for the Democratic Labour Party, and it is obviously a very controversial topic in the sense that um, there's a lot of chatter as to why um, you are running. And there's also a lot of chatter as it relates to your timing. Um, and I, I guess a lot of people do start with this as to say, as in the media, would have, you would have heard one moment, at one moment that you did not want to run or you had no intention of running. But at this time, we are then seeing you um, in the media uh, shortly after that announcement saying that you want to be able to take the party forward. I would have heard you on um, a calling program as well. So I sat and listened to you for the day um, that you want to take the country forward with this particular presidency. Now, having heard that, uh, Reverend Hewitt and the person saying that, you know, you say that you don't want to run in shut shard and then pick up the mantle. Uh, what what then would you say uh, change in that short period of time to make you want to run? Over to you. Sir. Good evening, all. Um, and if I can um, put this in context, um, the, the Democratic Labour Party has an annual conference. And at that annual conference, there is an opportunity while well, all of the positions in the executive, including the president, are vacated. And per person seek election or re-election. So it is not an aberration. It is a, an annual process. And it is one that from our greatest leader, uh, Walter Barrow to David Thompson and others have faced challenges for their leadership. And that is part of a democratic tradition. So I want to say that, that we are not seeing an aberration here. What we are seeing is democracy at work and democracy really and ultimately is about choice. To the, York, the other question about my saying that I wasn't running and then running, I said when I came into Barbados, um, I did not want to see a contested election. And that is the truth because we know we have to get ourselves as a party election ready. We have had recent examples that suggested we aren't quite there yet. But the reality is, and I said before, a week is a long time in politics. I came to Barbados and I listened and people spoke and articulated and encouraged me to look at this, look at the leadership issue within the Democratic Labour Party, look at the leadership issue within the country and to see what, to what extent I could offer myself towards making a difference. And that is what ultimately propelled me to seek the, the, the presidency of the Democratic Labour Party. But I think the party has a lot more that, that it has done tremendous things for Barbados in the past, a lot more it could be doing in the present, and definitely it has to get ready for an election in the future. At a bigger level, there is a country and, and this, the role of the Democratic Labour Party, when it has not been the government of the nation, has been the opposition, and we need to be able to or put ourselves in a position where we are again giving voice to the concerns of the electorate. So in essence, then, um, if I can pick you back off, the last thing you're saying is that the party in your own 
feeling is not at the place where it should be as it means being ready for election or be or ready in itself for no, not election ready and i don't think either really being effective in giving voice for the electorate out there in terms of the voice of an opposition in terms of being able to critique the government i have been doing it um in my capacity but there has to be a way in which we systematically bring attention to the feelings of the government it makes our governance more effective when you say critique the government you say that you have been doing it in your capacity is this is this what which capacity is this you're doing it in because i personally well, I write, I write I personally, as, so i have been writing in the print media as a barbadian as a concerned citizen about problems we've had whether it's in tourism or maritime affairs or international business or with the attorney general's office um i have been writing as an individual citizen but there is a need for i think or there's an opportunity for the democratic labor party to amplify the concerns of citizens out there we know how people are feeling in terms of the economy in terms of crime in terms of social dislocation and we need to we need to hold the government to account ultimately for it to function better and ultimately because we are a political organization we need to get ourselves into a position where we can offer ourselves as a credible choice to the people of Barbados to form a government so so basically then you would be saying that all the time is the pizza who would have been in the media i would say more than you yourself and for mr pizza who clearly everybody has been hearing and some people saying they were tired of hearing you were not saying that she has been amplifying the voice of of the people for the uh, concerns of the people over the past three years i think you have just answered your own question you suggested that the the people are not energized by what she has to say and, and what we need is an energy towards going to the government and holding it to account and it is it requires passion it requires strategy and ultimately it requires being able to pull a team together to do that job but i mean i mean in the sense that she has been very very vocal as a as a um as a president regardless of yeah. if, regardless if we are tired of hearing her or not she has been an, an a very vocal um president who have been holding the government to account and might be in her own you know funny way of holding people account but she has been obviously echoing that um you know what some of the key, uh, questions are coming to here it says that in that case why did guy not offer himself up in full support of the current leader in order to achieve the things that he say he wants to achieve example critique the government so some persons are saying here they, they they thinking that the timing is very um opportunistic um in some way and that you could have offered the offered yourself up and you're no offering yourself obviously where people think that you're just coming in for the opportunity what do you have to say about that that is coming from um but well, again i mean that question has been asked and answered we we go through an annual process and what we have not seen year on year since 2018 is the party getting stronger is the voice getting more effective is i don't want to use your adjectives of people seeking out and responding to the leadership and the positions articulated from the democratic party and that is our challenge we went through a recent by election and we were not able to galvanize the kind of support notwithstanding the fact of late that the 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 constituency has been strong tended towards barbas the party but that is not historically so but what we have not seen since 2018 when we got routed at the polls the kind of gains in terms of support and if you use the by election as a litmus test to suggest that we are ready or able to recapture the support base that we lost in 2018 and we have to be able to do that if we are going to be effective in terms of our role as a political organization okay. um, i want to jump in here uh 
But okay, that's, hey, that's why I ask mm-hmm. one question, Kimani. You could jump in. Um, when guy is critiquing and especially the performance of the Democratic Labour Party in the election, if I may ask a very uh, facetious question, the, I, Floyd did in in based on the statistics way better than probably any of your candidate did in a general election. Last so the sure. judge in the election. So in, in my oh, opinion, it may be some confident would have regained in the party and that you can credit the leadership to just saying if you're going to do just saying if you can credit the leader to because the most if not all if, if my memory served me the candidate did not pass a thousand and here um the young gentleman came under the leadership of the of the the um of very the piece and i must say i and i I'd like to be fair it was a very very good by election she ran an excellent by election. The, 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 the campaign was on. I mean, it wasn't enough to take over the Mayor administration. But I must say, she did do a very good. I was very interesting. It was very interesting to see. So I am just gauge. I'm just gauge. I'm just gauge. I'm No, I am not. coming back. Well, well, exactly, gentlemen. And, and I am going to. I was at other meetings. If you are comparing, Boy, if you are comparing our performance. If you are comparing our performance in the by-election against what obtained in 2018, then I we know that there was some improvement. But what we are talking about is a party that up to three years ago was the government of the governing the land. And so when we are saying that we see some marginal increase, it does not get us close enough to where we need to be to say that in 12 or 24 months, we are going to recapture seats lost. We are going to be able to ensure that we are at the worst, the the voice of the opposition, but at best that we are able to give people a choice in terms of who governs Barbados. And that is going to be 12 to 24 months out. We don't have time for us to not take the necessary steps, and if it has to be a massive leap in a short period of time to get us to that point. And that is why I am offering myself for the presidency. Okay. Yeah. Keep well, on. yeah. Good evening to all the viewers, Wayne, Esther, Marion, David, you know my usual uh, people. Thank you for tuning in. Fellas, good evening. Thank you. You ready, you ready for presidency? <laughs> <laughs> it's so, so you got support. You never, you never know, boy. Yeah, maybe one of those persons who speak about that might jump in the race. You never know. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. To hear from that, us. Is <laughs> that is democracy. Yeah. Um. But um, this is this is a very <laughs> tickly situation to be in. Um, last year, uh, as everyone knows, it would have been in the forefront in terms of um the race for office. Uh, or the DLP, where it would have won um, the general secretary post. Um, so I was able to see for a time what a leadership battle uh, for presidency would have been like between George Pilgrim and uh, Verla de Pisa at the time. And the challenge was, guy, uh, where was George? Um, where were all George's supporters and the like? Um, this is not me speaking. This is what was the general consensus from our concerns and the membership during that time. We were judged. We were all of the other persons and supporters who have all of these reservations. We were there since 2018 when the party needed persons to put their hands up, uh, when the party needed persons to do the heavy lifting. Uh, the party was in drastic conditions as it relates to its physical plan. Uh, the property was in dire straits, the party was in financial troubles and the like and the like and the like, right? Uh, so the grassroots membership of the party had this consensus that they are going to work with persons who were seen laboring in the field to bring the DLP back up to standard. But uh, since the election, we have not heard from Guy really. Um, in any capacity that really help the DLP to come back uh, to, to its heyday performance or the like. So my question is to you, um, how come we did not hear of you? How come we did not know of your intentions 
um, to help the party and to, to help um, run the country properly during the time where um, members would have been calling out for persons to come and help even members from the past and main uh, pe people were calling out for help so how come at that time we did not see your participation then well for the practical reason i was not in barbados i was living and working abroad and it made it very difficult for me but well, makes it impossible to do be in two places at once i have never moved away from my support to the Democratic Labour Party. But practically, I have not been in Barbados long enough to be able to provide that support for the last 15 months. Because of COVID, I have been cut away physically from not only family, but from Barbados and most things Bajan. I've been able to participate in a few batch meetings, but I there's not there has not been much more that I've been able to do at a distance. Would I have liked to have been able to do more? Sure. But my practical situation did not facilitate it. Had well, I been you, here, I, I can know, say to you, I would have been more involved. But I, I, I just want to, right, just want to, before you go, Simon, uh, sure. but I can, I can say comfortably, I mean, there's no attack on you, and it's just me trying to understand. Um, go ahead. Right. I can say, let's just say Carlos Fort, for example. Carlos is based in um, Canada. Canada. Mm -hmm. And he still contributes his opinions uh, in terms of economics to the island and any other writings that you may have. So the question really is, no, how come okay, so let's you still are not able to contribute? And no, let me answer that. I have been writing in the media for well over the last 12 months. That's just a fact. So, so if you if you use that as a comparator, then yes, I, I fit that bill. I have been writing in the media, not just my tempo and, and my fervor has intensified since Good Friday. But if you check media postings, if you go back and Google um, the news with my name, Guy Hewitt Barbados, you are going to see dozens of articles that have been written not just in Barbados, but have been written in the United Kingdom about Barbados, have been published in Jamaica about Barbados. So I have been focused and attuned to Barbados for a long time. I have not been here, but my heart has always been in Barbados. If I may read two right. comments. I just want to read two comments before you come in. Okay. Uh, two here. How I see this act Guy Pullen, BLP weak at the moment with poor decision their government made. Sorry, the thing coming. Guy, you know, you come now to break the only party that can stand any resistance to this selfish government and forget and forgot the majority. Another person says, I live and work overseas and I am visible and voted in the last election. Right? Somebody said, where was Kimar Stewart? Um, to his, I was to um, I was president of the Young Democrats before uh, Mr. Baron Bishop. <laughs> Bar Baron seems to got issues straight, right? And then um, so so this, this is thing. But um, if I could add on, and then Simon, you could ask as well. I just got so I got. Like, you know what is the difference? And if you could, I just picky back you know for Kimar. What is the difference between then and now? Meaning that you said that you were out of the country for a prolonged period of time because of COVID, work, all of this. Mm -hmm. And now you are, are you back because of the presidency? Are you on vacation? Are you here momentarily and then you're gone again? What is the position of the You know that it would be obviously that the people could, the Democratic Labour Party people could trust you enough to put the vote behind you and know that you would not be like, as one person allegedly said, Floyd Reefer ready to go up on a cricket contract. Sorry, and let me let me just pick up that last point first, because I don't want it to sound or to be pejorative. Again, Floyd Reefer, like myself, we have to go where the work is. And if the work is not in Barbados, we need to be able to respect people's right and need to go abroad to work. 
That has been a, a history of Barbadians. We built the Panama Canal, we went to the UK with we Rush, we, we went to the US, to Canada. So I don't ever want us to make it feel like because somebody went away, they have abandoned Barbados. That is an important, I think, a principle we must hold on to. So, so if Floyd is going abroad to apply his trade, we should wish him well. No, I think you missed it. No, you're missing no, 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 I, I know. I just want to know. I'm coming back to the truth. Yeah, because I, I, I don't think my argument is whether you go overseas and work or not. I am asking based on your position here. A, a Barbarian don't want a politician no, no, that, that has a constituency to be living in New York. Okay, now to I am coming fair. back. I'm coming okay. back to your point. Now, again, seeing that you have mentioned it, we have had members of parliament resident abroad. We know that they have been in Canada and they have flown in and they have flown back out. So again, let us not try to create new no principles when practices have been different. We have we had members of parliament. No, no. So they fly no, on the radar. Again, you put, pardon? They fly on the no, radar. No, no, known to his constituency, known to his party, known to parliament, and known to most Barbadians. But you ask me the question, what is my status? I am here, I'm remote working in Barbados. I came home for the first time, as I said, after 15 months because of COVID regulations and my commitments abroad. I came home not with an intention of pursuing political office, but I came with the passion that I've always had of wanting the best for Barbados. I came here and people came to me and said to me, this is a void that and a support we think you could give. It is not that I feel that or have any political aspirations. It's about us trying to find ways of helping the best way we can. People have looked at what I have done in the past in terms of taking on government, in terms of fundraising, in terms of leading teams. And that is why they asked me. In terms of what, if I am elected to the presidency, of necessity, it is going to require my presence in Barbados. And that is something that has to be transitioned. And if any of y'all, which I presume y'all are as professionals, have commitments and have commi multiple commitments, you know those have to be resolved. But what people have to be able to appreciate is that the commitment is genuine. Um, you, I, 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 I just want to say a couple of things before you go, sorry. Sorry, go ahead, Sam. Go ahead. Yeah, being, being a former vice president of the Democratic Labour Party and a long-standing member who worked in the Democratic Labour Party, I think that the whole issue with leadership in the party will always be ongoing. It is impossible for any leader within a political organization to believe that their leadership will never be challenged. That's the first thing. So what guy is doing is nothing that is crazy or coming far from left field, all right? We don't it's a it political is. organization. It's a voluntary political organization. People will join the party. People will aspire for office and people will also lead the party. I think the real thing right now for the Democratic Labor Party is to make sure that they're able, whether it's under Verla de Pisa, whether it's under you, um, um, Guy Hewitt, whoever that takes over leadership of the party understands that if you're going to lead the party, the members, not just older members or the what we call the old guard of the party, all the members of the party have the support of the leader and, feels, and the leader feels the support from all of the rank and file within the party. That is very important. A strong Democratic Labour Party requires its base, but it also requires new voters. I said this when Brother De Pisa was on the program as well. I understand that the government has made mistakes in the eyes of people and that there are some challenges with how things have been done since COVID, how the economy has been turning around. But let us not leave this program believing that because people are upset with Prime Minister Mia Motley, that they will not go back to the polls and vote for the Barbados Labour Party again. So let's let's just get that delusion out of our mind. Now, because people are upset right now with how things are being done, that magically they're going to gravitate towards the Democratic Labour Party. It does not work like that. What the Democratic Labour Party has to show to the people of Barbados is that number one, it is competent. 
Number one, see competency. We talk about captaincy and we talk about leadership. But you see the word competency? People, and I mean people outside the Democratic Labour Party, who you want vote for you, have to believe that the Democratic Labour Party leaders and those persons who are presenting themselves as candidates are seen as competent enough to run the country better than the previous administration. Better than Understand that. That's one thing. Two, the second thing now is that you, you, you as a leader, if you choose to be the leader and you're elected as a leader of the Democratic Labour Party, Mr. Hewitt, I beg you, make sure that there's a distinction between the new DLP and the old DLP. If there is no distinction between the new DLP that you want to champion, that you want to take forward, and the old DLP, what you're going to find is that the person will say, well, wait, but it's the same people that run last time, but they're in the newness about this DLP. Oh, and the same the results you got at the last election, you're going to get again. So make sure that there is a clear distinction between the new DLP and the old DLP. And I beg to say that if you believe that the Democratic Labour Party is going to go forward with all the baggage of the old DLP to win new voters, to get new persons to come and support the party, you have a problem. All right? So make sure, Guy, that there is a clear distinction between the new DLP and the old DLP. Some, and if that is not some. done, you're going to find that you're going to be spending talk in month. And you don't want that. Sorry. I want to say. I, I, no, no. And if I can just say it quickly, um, right. I appreciate a lot of what you have to say. And I think you have a lot of ideas to offer the Democratic Labour Party. And I hope under new leadership, you might consider giving us some more practical support coming back home because you're always welcome. You know, the Bible speaks very well about the prodigals. There's always space. I don't Where know. Let me, let me, let me hold on, Jeremy. Hold on, Jeremy. Hold on, Jeremy. Yes. He's still talking. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Hewitt. No, no, and I just want to say that. So I'm saying to Simon, I hear what he has said. I don't agree with him. And I feel there's a lot that he can contribute in the future. So if I have the opportunity, let it not be said that if you get called from me, you're surprised. But, but, but I would just add to that, though, Mr. Hewitt, as young people and how, how, how we are treated as young people, that's one that's question right. to you, that they're coming back home to support and put up a placard when you know you got to the sweet George Street, I ain't coming back home sweet George Street. It has to be the to run. Nah, they do, do that too much in too many years. All right. Nah. So, I mean, when you nah. call on them, with, with ambition, don't come and tell me, sit down for five years behind them horseback like before, because you already do it. So now if you know the, the young people got the ambition and have proven, I am not that saying that you, you know, and not saying that you don't start from the, 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 the mail room up, but some of the us as young people ain't in the mail room. Some of us know executive chairs and believe that we can contribute just like some of the people that try Remember to that contribute already and try to contribute again. And we ain't given the chance and we are told as young people sit you got and wait and we got 10 years uh, and we young. No. Let That's me fine. assure you. Let me assure you that there must be, there must be in any organization succession planning, there must be rooms made for new talent and for new blood. That is how I think, that is how I operate. So what Simon said to me resonates with me and, and I could say I endorse it. But what I want to say, one thing you said, Simon, is that you have to make sure you have the support of everybody. In any membership organization, it is going to be impossible to please all the people all the time. True. So what you have to do is be able to identify what, who are and what are those critical objectives, critical targets that you have to take, and how do you move people forward? I said to people, the, the challenge of a leader is to be able, if you understand the chemistry, of to get oil and water to mix. People who do not normally come together, you make the cause big enough and make the vision big enough that you get people who might not want to work together come together because they believe in the cause. And this is what I'm talking about with the Democratic Labour Party. It must not be about personalities, the president or the old guard or a young guard. What we have to do is to stand in front of and project a vision that Bajans are comfortable with. And we, are, we have done it before and we can do it again. But what we need to do 
is to focus on a team effort for us to do it together. And this is part of when I say to people, I don't have the psyche of a politician. It's not that I am not a politician, not willing to get in politics or to lead and be a political leader. It is that why don't think about me? It's not about me. And this is why when I said before, the notion of servant leadership, it is about leading from the middle and saying, we go forward together. And that is why when people are asking me, you know, they're saying to me, why you ain't got a constituency? Why you ain't love? Because I am not seeking to get in the House of, uh, House of Assembly to become a minister or leader of the opposition or prime minister. I am trying to build needs a lot of support and it's not just support from the membership it needs support from the wider society that if we don't project that vision and image it's not going to come mm -hmm. i'm not saying that i don't have political aspirations and i might not recognize the need for there to be constituency representation in my role at some point in time. but right now i am focused on making an organization effective in communicating with the wider society on how we can work with them to make Barbados better. Uh, Jeremy, before like, you let you in, Jeremy, uh, Timor, before you let me read this comment on from uh, Baron. Um, he said, oh, come on, Safri, the youth of today are no different than the ones before. They will always, and they will, sorry, they always, and will always be more room for youth in all aspects of society, but please do not believe that youth of today are more special than the one before. And sometimes they, they, they wow. make this ignorant comments like these here uh, when they see it. You know that you, you don't understand. In politics a lot of times, young people have been shunned. And you always see, you're talking about succession planning, but there's, none. No, there's, none, there's none. They're there's talking none. about come and be, come and work the grounds and come and start from here. And then 10 years later, 15 years later, when opportunity presents itself, the people who have served 15 and 20 Thank terms you. are not moving back for us to be able to come up there. I can give my own experience, Kima. You cannot tell me, Sangma Ali, mm. that spent close to 20 years in the Democratic Labour Party. You cannot tell me, Sangma Ali, who spent more close to 20 years in the Democratic Labour Party, who served as branch chairman for number years, but say Michael Knorr, for example, was president of the Young Democrats, who was also the second vice president of the Democrat Labor Party. You cannot come and tell me, you can't come and tell me now that, oh, Simon, um, yes, we want you to run. We want you to run. All right. I get myself together. I start to do stuff in the constituency. You go to the person that was there before and they say, well, no, I'm done with politics. I'm done. I'm done. I'm not coming back. I would endorse you, I would support you. You go and start to do work in the constituency. You're gonna meet with the branch. At that time, you let them know what your intention is and everybody know you. Cause contrary to popular belief like with me, I know a pair of the clouds and come to the Democrat Labour Party. I've always been around the party and I've always been working in the party. I've been speaking on platforms, doing stuff in the constituency. So when I hear foolish comments that, oh, and um, the young people want to create a different DLP and this and that. It's all about treating members properly. And that is the biggest problem, guy, that I have always had with the Democratic Labour Party. Don't come and tell me. I don't say, oh, well, yeah, qualify. I guess two degrees don't matter then. I have a, I have the, the, uh, a national profile and being able to serve in a constituency doesn't matter. My problem sometimes, and that's probably one of the reasons why I left, one of the main reasons why I left the Democratic Labour Party. I am no political football for nobody. If you want Simon, you want me. But I will not be running from pillar to post to prove anything to anybody. But I have served for years in that party. I did it along with many other people in the party. You understand? So I understand this whole talk about young people. I am almost 40 though. I may look kind of young, but he's almost 40. I will be 40 this year. And you're telling me, oh, Simon, wait, five more years, 10 more years, that's 50? Are you ridiculous? That's not going to happen. So the Democratic Labour Party has to be careful how it treats its members. And as much as it would attract young people, the problem is retaining young people and people that have a contribution to make. 
Why are young people important in elections? Ask Barack Obama. When you look at the statistics, Barack Obama got elected on the backs of young people. Ask, David Thompson. Molly. David Ask Thompson. Molly. Ask David Thompson. Mm -hmm. David Thompson was one of the reasons why he joined the Democratic Labour Party, because he understood young people, and he understood that there was a contribution that they could make. But don't be telling me now that because you young, oh, you young, you know, come, I know, come. And a lot of young people in the party can become disillusioned over the years when you put so much years of service, you're working in the party, you're availing yourself, you're helping. Huh? And then you're hearing, oh, well, we don't want you, or no, they don't want you at this branch, or no, you know what, Simon, you could hop and go and see if you can run somewhere else. It's not happening. I think that at the end of the day, if the Democratic Labour Party wants to be serious and win the next election, the strategy clearly has to be the young people. If you are not appealing to young people as a political organization, you are dying. You are dying if you're not appealing to young people. Look at the Senate now in Barbados. Whether or not you think the Senate is effective or not, that's your business. That's fine. But look at the composition of the, the Senate in Barbados. The amount of young professionals that were in the Senate. The fact that for 10 years, the Democratic Labour Party had an opportunity to bring some new faces into the Senate. New people who had intentions to run and serve in the party, to run on a Democratic Labour Party ticket, that was never done. So we can't be serious about going forward, or should I say, uh, the Democratic Labour Party. Cannot be serious about going forward and changing and appealing to young people when you don't have proper youth representation out there. So anyhow, I'm sorry to be so passionate because I speak oh, in front of people. People loving it, girl. People but, loving it, so much. Like, if I may, but if I may, from my experience, because I love come to the Democratic Labour Party, and I was not it. happy. <laughs> I was not happy before he was shooting the party. I never tell anybody that. Can I speak now? Go ahead. Go ahead. But if I can then make up on this point, because, and it's not a long one. And I said, Simon, you are articulating, in a sense, part of the concerns that have been brought to me about the way in which leadership has not been effective. And one of your things is, as you said, reaching out to the future. I have said on the program, and I've said before, I've looked at what is going on now. And, and I'm concerned by the absence of female leadership and female standing as candidates going forward into the next election. When you look at the voting patterns, when you look at Barbados' history, what the role that women currently play. There are concerns, and I share with you, though there must be a space made to ensure that young people are seen and heard, are given effective voice, and as you are articulating, are ensured that they have a pathway towards what realizing whatever political aspirations or ambitions they have, and if those cannot be realized, that they are told that early on. So I hear yeah. you, and there's nothing that you are But don't mislead people. Said, that I don't, disagree. Correct. Don't that, mislead and, and people. I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. Don't I agree with you. People, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And part of what I am trying to do is bring about change. As I said, a new dawn inside the Democratic uh, Party. I have a comment. I have a comment I wanted to make. No, I like I like the passion of politics, but what I don't like is the part where we get personal. And what I am noticing is that there are persons who believe that guy should not run, which I which is I, I disagree with. It could be guy or anybody who feel like they want to run as long as the membership puts you forward. Is your choice to say yes or no. So I don't believe in degrading or pulling down anybody who has ambitions to aspire to any office in Barbados. And my thinking surrounds a comment that I have seen here. Um, with, with, I don't know what the lady, uh, she's probably a first time guest on the show, um, Angela Webster. She said, if Kimar Stewart could run against the DLP in 2018, then come and get Young Dance president, then any member can run for any post. Now, I find that extremely disparaging to a young person like me who otherwise would have not had an opportunity to run in politics if not if I chose 
uh, to enter into the DLP last election, I would have not even been given a blink on my eye. <laughs> so when young people put themselves up um, to aspire, to try and to do things, and then persons give their mouth the liberty to come and always try to slap them down, pull them down, uh, in some case, always say, oh, slow down, wait, you can wait. I myself had experience in, in the DLP from a senior member who, who told me, oh, man, you don't need to run. You can wait three elections. And what I am saying is really and truly is that there is not adequate encouragement for persons young or old, <laughs> male or female, uh, to come into the political realm be encouraged, be nurtured into a constituency or, or, or the diplomatic corps or, or anything in the light for them to, to go forward. And on top of that, then there are supporters of the party who act in this cult-like manner to destroy anybody or persons who seek not to want to, to trod the traditional norm of how things are done. Well, Let me well, see. Well, Kimar, sorry, I mean to cut you. Well, Kimar, what I have done, you don't have to do like me. Why I've done is said, you know what? If the DLP belongs to the people, let them have it. No, I no, I don't. For the years yeah. I served in the party, but I, I can no longer be a political pinata or a political spinning talk for certain groups within the Democrat Labour Party. Uh, I, I understand I that, but, but my philosophy, my philosophy is that if you are a young person in Barbados looking for change of the political culture, then a battle like, battle like that should not run anybody. I believe that it is a time to stand up and fight. Um, so what I am thinking is that if young, young people, I'm not only saying young in 20s, but just young in general, if people, because I don't want to use that term to make it sound like it discriminates anybody, but if persons are interested in politics in general, male or female, one needs to ensure that the space you're entering into is conducive to that potential right. group that any candidate right. can achieve. If it is, I, agree. If I think that white guy is running is that he does not believe that the political environment of the Democratic Labour Party right now is conducive to winning anything. Wow. Right? And guy could correct me, he could correct me if I'm wrong. So he is saying, well, okay, I see a problem. I put my hat in the ring to try to correct that problem. This has nothing to do with the leader, whoever the leader is. This has nothing to do with offending anybody or the light or anything like that. This, as he said, this is a great thing. And God is putting him in it. Well, he still has to get the nomination from the membership. So if there is a section of the mem membership of the party that believes that guy or whoever has the standing to, to, to go for presidency of the DLP and they vote him in, the members vote him in, that it cannot come out to personal attacks and trying to drag and kick people because they want or they're aspiring to do the job that any person will love the opportunity to do. So my thing really is, I, 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 I'm just going to end on this. My overarching point really is that you cannot seek to bash people and pull, and pull people down for ambition and potential and wanting to give. And then on the other hand, supporting somebody for fledgingly that you were willing to destroy another party member who could potentially run in the seat and win your seat and potentially win your government that you will have to partner with to work with in the future. It don't make sense. I believe in um, competitiveness and being able to compete within a space respectfully. So if it is that guy you are bringing respect and you are bringing the old traditional values that people can actually uh, uh, behave civilized and the people could be gelled together to become a formidable unit to possibly take the government and you believe within your heart that you can do that, then your name could go in the heart. If what you really believes that, his name could go in the heart. If Irene Sanders is going to believe that, her name could go in the heart. So I don't really get what's the big outcry and the last, you know, um, so I would just say, guy, I wish you all the best, basically. Let me hear you respond, guy. No, I, I, I thank him. I mean, I, I have been, been enjoying this discussion because I think it is very frank. It is very honest. You're hearing young people, persons from within the Democratic Labour Party, articulating things that I, I support. And I want to just say what Kimar just said about that. 
I mean, everybody who has worked with me, I've said that. This is not personal. This is not personal. The, the current president of the Democratic Labour Party, I've commended her for taking up the leadership. I have said it, it has turned prayer in the press. I want her to be a success in politics. But I recognize that the weight of the presidency and the leadership of the Democratic Labour Party is such that it is a weight that has to be shared. And I'm not saying shared by me taking it over. It, you need a structure. And one of the things that I realize, you need to have a general, a general secretary and a secretariat that is functioning. You need to have vice presidents out there who do what their role are, so that when you say the leadership of the Democratic Labour Party, it's not about a person. It is about a corporate entity that multiple faces represent and are empowered to represent and are able to effectively represent that in the public domain. It's not, it should never be about an individual. I know we have this cult of leader in Barbados where we look for prime minister is gonna be the be all and end all. But often we, can, we are disappointed. I have said in, in my other space, do not put people on pedestals for fear that you realize they are more human than you are. We have to realize that our leaders are one of us first amongst equals. And this is part of the challenge we are encountering now, that the team effect, the team approach is not working. And both, I would say, to a certain extent in the Democratic Labour Party, we're seeing it also replicated at the national level. We need a group of people to be serious and focus on the issues that we are facing. They are numerous. And whether we're um, in the Democratic Labour Party or the Party of the Government, no one person can solve it. So I will pause there. Jermaine, I'm um, bringing your video. So far. Just letting you guys know, Jermaine is having technical uh, difficulties with his video. Uh, you know, uh, Jermaine, you want to turn on the video? You know, it's not going to show. Just ask your question to Mr. Hewitt. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm turning on the video. video. Yeah, we're not going to see you. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> just joking. Okay. 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 Um, well, personally, um, good evening, Reverend Hewitt. Um, good evening. It is very nice to have you on the show. Um, I, I realize that you're doing the talk show around all around Barbados, um, down to Brass. I, that's go, I go where I'm invited. That okay. is just my, my good manners. Okay. Well, my, my, my challenge with what you're doing, and I, I'm going to be very straight with you, because um, I like to be a straight shooter. Um, you're doing a very effective job at canvassing Barbados Labour Party support and persons in general in Barbados. But the one place that I have not seen you turn up, which I'm very concerned about, or I have not heard about you turning up, is in George Street. Um, further to that, um, I have heard around. members of the Democratic Labour Party call in on the same down the brass stacks and said that they don't know you. And you know, I, I also have some very good friends within the Democratic Labour Party who said that they are very unsure as to what you are doing. So, you know, I want to get back to the substance of the reason why you came here this evening, because I'm here you talking about policy and changes and a, a, a lot of things which sound really fancy and really nice. But the reality of the situation, I, I put it there because um, it's glaringly obvious, the Democratic Labour Party at current does not have any seats in the House of Parliament. And on the current trajectory, if you continue the way that you're going, even with yourself and the valiant efforts that you are preparing to put in, you may emerge from the next um, campaign without any seats again, right? And, you know, I heard you inviting uh, Mr. Aline there back, but Simon may, 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 may have to ask himself if he really wants to, right? So, you know, I, I, I want to ask you, my first question to you is, how are you seeking, firstly, to reach out to the members of the Democratic Labour Party? Because before we talk about policy, and changing anything in Barbados, you have to um, get, you have to actually be in the House of Parliament, but you also have to be the president of the Democratic Labour Party. And though some may think that Mr. Pisa is not doing um, a perfect job, the reality of the situation is that in 2018, when everyone else ran and hide, she stepped up to the plate. And to this day, Mr. Pisa 
is taking a lot of licks all over Barbados for the same Democratic Labour Party and part of the last decade. So I, I want to ask you, one, as I said, um, what is your plan to reach out to the members of the Democratic Labour Party? Um, number two, um, are you, well, Mr. Pisa has more or less picked a slate for the next election. Are you satisfied with the persons that if you were to be successful in um, leading the Democratic Labour Party, um, are you satisfied that those persons are the persons you would want on a ticket with you and you're willing to lead um, into battle against the Barbados Labour Party? And actually someone just messaged a question and told me that they want me to ask you which branch of the Democratic Labour Party you belongs to and if any president or any candidate has endorsed you. He's on this real question, big man, slow. Go ahead. I, 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 I mean, I am overwhelmed by the, the amount of information I just received, but let's go through it. <laughs> Mr. Let's Uwe, go through it. I guess you I have met Jeremy at that point. <laughs> anything that I, yes, I, I Anything that I have um, forgotten, you can pick up on. Um, somebody asked when was I last in George Street. I was there Sunday before um, for a meeting. I, 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 so I, I know that what people are trying to say. I, some people don't know me. And, and for those who I, they don't know me, I look forward to getting to know them. I have supported, I've been around in the crap lit, right, for a very long time. I pride myself as being and all of what the DLP has given to me and given to Barbados. So, so um, the bona fide issues, I mean, we could discuss them and debate them, but I, I think they speak for themselves. How am I reaching out to, to um, the members, through the branches, through individual contacts and communication? This is like any other um, um, quest for, for an election, you have to seek votes. And that is what I am doing. And I'm doing it in a systematic way, in an organized way, in a non-personal way. And, and, and I bring that back to you, the question about, about, about the, the current president. Nobody, nobody discounts the role she played. What we are talking about is moving from trying to bring an organization together and getting an organization ready to account for itself to the public and to get into election mode. And that is really what the focus is on. It's not about, and with the greatest of respect, George Street is a hallowed place for the members of the Democratic Labour Party. It has great historic significance. There's a great legacy and tradition within that building. But we need to realize that if we are going to win a government, we have to leave George Street and we have to get onto the highways and the byways and not content ourselves with coming together and simply looking around at each other who is there and feeling reassured that those who are there are part of the collective. The collective is two, over 280,000 people who spoke to us very clearly in 2018. And we have to be able to say to the people of Barbados, we heard you. We get you. We understand that you expect us to do better and that we will do better. And that is what I am working towards, being able to reassure Barbadians that a vote in the Democratic Labour Party is a vote for integrity, a vote for decency, a vote for sound leadership, a vote for social values, a vote for, or for economic empowerment, putting together Okay, now I've heard I've heard all that you're saying, right? And just mm -hmm. like um, my friend Mr. Safri, I want you to know that I, I, I listen with interest every time you give you make an appearance around Barbados. Right? Hey, we come in here for big man. <laughs> oh we Mr. Safri is very in tune with the media. But I I I, I want to be fair here, right? And I, I, I have to be very fair. No, you, 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 you talk a really good game. You talk a really, really good game. I mean, to be fair, if you were a BLP candidate, you would got everybody let down for six, right? But you trying to say he done with the presidency? No, no, hold on, hold on. <laughs> the, the reality is this, right? I, 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 want, I, I want you to tell me, because you, you're talking about what you intend to do now. Um, there are some persons who are telling me that you're trying to write in like a savior, right? But what have you done 
since 2018, other than write a few articles in the newspaper every now and then and go on and go live on Facebook with your church sermons? But again, I have asked the guys that question and answered it. I have been abroad. I have been dislocated and disconnected from Barbados for the last 15 months. I have participated when I can in branch meetings. I have written when I can. And what I'm asking, or I would ask you to say, or to suggest to me, what would you have expected a person living abroad under COVID, unable to get home, what would you have wanted me to be doing more? Because you know, you know, honestly, I could mm, learn, on, and I would be interested in hearing from you. You know, the first thing I would do for you, Reverend Hill, and I, I'm going I'm, mm. I'm, I'm to give you some free political advice now. Um, but, uh, someone just messaged me and tell me. Penny. Ain't even worth a penny. Hold on. Someone just messaged me and tell me to tell you to pay a bill and you can do it by Western Union money transfer. But beyond that, um, the, the reality is. I, I, I don't understand the comment. I don't understand the comment. Hold on. The, the reality is this. Um, the first thing I would have done, honestly, if I were you, would be to turn up at Jar Street other than two weeks ago, Sander. Um, Start a program, say you want, buy a few cans of paint, paint, paint the place, um, hold a line, yeah. try to do a retreat, get your pill back together, because the reality is this. Um, whilst we are here, whilst you are here saying all of the feelings that you think um, Mrs. DePisa has, and some may oh, run no, 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 no. right? The reality is this, man. you are hold running on, the Jeremy. of the hold Democratic on, Party. Hold on, hold on, hold on, We have to be organized and orderly here. I have not pointed, and if you can listen to the failings of the present Democratic Labour Party, I have not come on this program and I have not sought to get personal. I have spoken to issues of leadership. I've spoken to issues of leadership. I've not gotten personal. And I want to pick up on what Kimar was saying earlier. I have That's said right. to people, um, Stuart, I have said to, to people who are supporting me, when they go low, we go high. I am not going to be attacking and assaulting the, the present Democratic Labour Party. I have nothing to gain personally, and the Democratic Labour Party has nothing to gain institutionally from that kind of politics. You ask me, what can I do? And, and as you said, I have just come back in the island, and yes, I have been assisting the young Democrats, and yes, I've been assisting candidates in the field. So this, this is what I'm saying. I have just come back in. So for those who are out there who are wondering or want to find ways of suggesting that I'm not committed, they're going to have to try harder because if you speak to the young Democrats, they will tell you what contributions I made. If you speak to candidates in the field, they will tell you what contributions I made. If you speak to the branches, they will tell you what contributions I've made. So I say to you, honestly, with the reality of COVID that the government has used to excuse itself, why am I being held to some kind of unreasonable standard that says a man who goes away to support his family cannot get back home, somehow must have some kind of superhuman action. What well, I would turn that around and say is ask the question, what was being done in the Democratic Labour Party? All of the branches, are all of our branches up, running and effective? Do we have elections and committees in them? Are we visiting them? Has everybody been in touch with everyone? So these are questions that are not just put to me. They can be put But to can you answer any of those questions? Can you answer any of those questions? Hold on, hold on, Jeremy. Can you answer any of the questions? Plus two, as it pertains to your membership in and which branch do you belong to? Because if you're talking about building back branch and if you're talking about ready in the yes. party, it, for me, it would be remiss that as a leader of, a, of, of the, of the um, seeking leadership for the party, you have not yet clearly identified which branch you belong to or which um, constituency you are seeking to run in because this is important. Yes, you may be focused, yes, you may be focused, yes, you may be focusing on your nomination process or your uh, presidency uh, right now. But if by now, let's say by now and the end of, let's say August is our convention, August, Verla de Pisa fill all the slates. So you, Verla de Pisa comes out with 30 members between now and August. It means then that Guy Hewitt will have to, if he win presidency, remove somebody 
from the candidate selection to become a sitting member of parliament and try and win a constituency. You cannot get in parliament or you can't have the presidency us, without let us, first having it. So who us, are, have you, hold on, have you, have you, have you choose a branch and have you yet selected a seat to run in? Let me respond. I, I honestly right. remember at the beginning of this interview. That's, I, that question uh, is coming back question. over and over. No, no, but, but what I'm saying, but okay, let me repeat mm. myself. Go ahead. At this point in time, I am focused on the presidency of the Democratic Labour Party. I have said that over and over. Mm. I have to repeat it over and over again. It is not a problem. At this point in time, the issue we have is getting a central unit organized and focused. You asked, and, and um, Jeffrey asked earlier, how do I feel about all of the candidates? I raise a real issue. I have a concern with the disproportionate absence, the significant absence of females on the ballot. That does not mean that I'm going to rush in and say to somebody, they have to go or somebody has to come in. What I am saying is that I feel that these are issues that need to be considered. But Mr. Hewitt, we, to me, to but, me, you're running sorry. from the question. Sorry, I, 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 sorry, I, 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 I to me, I you're running you from the question you. of whether you. I asked you a pertinent question, which people here are begging for you to answer. If Verla de Pisa fill all thirty seats by now and general election, general conference, and you are selected as a member, general conference, sorry, and you are selected as as the the president. You and have to move someone to please say so you. Yes, you are already. Okay, stop, you are going to create a raft. But let me answer that. That is yes, not. Please. That is a presumption. The presumption is mm -hmm. that the president must be the political leader. That is a presumption. Ah, that is a presumption. Okay. That ah. is a presumption. I am not saying that whether they must be or will be. What I'm saying is that is a presumption. So your question is, if they are all filled, mm -hmm. if they are all filled, mm -hmm. they are filled. And if we are confident as a party that those candidates who have been selected are effective all as 30. a party, all 30, to mm -hmm. meet the needs of a party trying to win an election, I abide by democratic processes. Somebody's asking here, do you need to be, this is coming uh, for Adrian Alcott, do you need to be a candidate to be president? And that is uh, important. Does your constitution no, you allow for you? Um, no. vice, second vice president, can you affirm that? Um, former second vice president, do you have to be a, can, do you, a candidate? Or you you, don't, have, you don't have to be a candidate, but it, so, is, it, it is implied mm -hmm. if you're going to take up leadership of the Democratic Labour Party. It is implied that you would want to lead the party into election in the sense that you would have an aspiration to run for a particular um, seat. So, okay. So, do you have, there you have it, um, listeners, that you do not need to be the, you do not need to have candidate level to be uh -huh. able to, to be able to be, I think. Kimar, you want to say something? Yeah. No, you were yeah. general secretary as well. Yeah, I wanted to make two points. And this is the one um, about women. I agree that women need to be in a political space. However, um, and this is my pet peeve, is that on one hand, you are saying that you want more women, but then on the other hand, you threaten to basically remove a woman from <laughs> office. <laughs> right? The other... No, I, I, I can't speak to your intention, but I don't really believe in the whole gender battle and the whole gender. I think, I think people got equal right to participate in any action that they may wish, but for uh, vendetta, not really vendetta, but for people's own personal agenda, they would try to attach gender uh, for the benefit of some or not. But really, what I, I want to get to the point about women participating, and I, I'm going to ask you, have we seen a lot of women coming forward to put themselves uh, within the fray for political office, right? Um, I know people will say, well, you know, encourage them and, and they like and they like and they like what's not. But there's nothing really stopping females. Uh, I don't think people really say, well, use a woman, we want you. 
I don't think it is that, right? But I, I think that politics for women and politics for men are different, right? And the way a female would approach politics compared to where a male would approach politics, it is different. So if you're, if you're in a situation where women choose not to want to go the full mile and participate in elective uh, office, how then do you combat that? Because as far as I know, the females um, around the DRP, the process was open for anybody to participate, male or female. And for some reason, you didn't get many females uh, coming forward. So I just wanted to know what would you do different to encourage the females to come forward? Right. Um, three points. Um, first point is you asked about me running against a woman. I'm not running against a woman. I'm running against the president of the Democratic Party who happens to be a woman. This is not a gender battle. This is about the presidency of the Democratic Party. And it comes down to who is competing for it. Your question about women coming forward in politics, if we are critical and honest about it, we would realize that some political parties in Barbados have done a lot better than others in terms of getting women, if we want to use it at the cabinet level, into cabinet level positions. That historically is a fact. You asked the third question, what do we do? We don't wait for women to turn up in politics. We have to recognize because of diff some social differences, even some familial differences, we have to make spaces attractive towards getting women into politics. For instance, I'll give you a wonderful example. In the House of Commons in the UK, they have a nursery where female members who have children are able to bring their children into the House of Commons, in our case, the House of Sevier, and there is daycare and childcare available to them. There are practical things that we can do. There are ways in which we can go out and it's not a political party. It's about governance and seeing democracy as a public good. Educating our young people in schools about the need for them to take representation seriously. We have women who are happy to be corporate leaders, to lead NGOs, to be leaders in civil society. But when it comes to politics, they shy away. And possibly because we allow it to descend beneath a certain standard and a bar that turns off not just women, but a lot of decent people. We have to make changes. Guy, if yeah. I may ask you a question. Yeah. Sorry. I, have to, um, have to I just want uh, I just want to ask I you one to. question. We have a lot of controversy around you running. And I have not seen much controversy as pertain to your running. Um, like there was when Verla de Pisa took on. Um, I think she went up twice on um twice on a post and then she took on um George Pilgrim. Right? And you're, there's a lot of, you know, chatter around you running. Do you believe, or well, one, do you believe, or what do you believe rather, is the whole clear about because you ain't running? What, what do you I believe? Said, okay, let me let me put it to you this way. Hmm. Politics is not just for for any political organization. Is not dealing with your adversaries that are, or dealing with challenges that are, but it's anticipating the challenges that are to come. While I was in the United States um, recently, Mr. The former President Trump made it a point to see, get his supporters to try to, in whatever ways they can, to, to suggest that the person to run again them what should be um, Bernie Sanders. Why? Because Mr. Trump knew because of the labels that he could easily stick on, on um, Bernie Sanders as a socialist and thing, it would have probably secured him the election. We have had a situation where this government has said, this current regime has said that the leadership of the Democratic Labour Party is one of its biggest gifts. 
That to me is not anything complimentary about an organization I look to lead. I want to be a headache for this regime. I want to really be able to say, no, no, but, but, but hold on. And if you look and you ask the question, why am I so controversial? Because no, 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 sorry. No, 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 I'm not saying you are on. controversial. No, no, stop. No, 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 stop again. Can I finish? Right, why you... this election? No, hold right. on. If right. can, you ask, let me answer. Why is this election so controversial? It's because the Barbados Labour Party has involved itself in it as well. You have seen last year, there was no writing to the paper about, about any of the two candidates. They have taken a point, and it's not about the BL people that are coming after me. The BLP, if you read the Sunday, the, sorry, let me go on. If you read the press, the agents on behalf of the Barbados Labour Party, both known and cloaked, have come after me, even those under the guise of friends. <laughs> and but, they, are throwing, they are throwing everything at me. But, but guy, a, reason, a lot, a lot a of reason. No, no, no. I, hold you, on, hold you, on. You are on, not on, doing this campaign, correct? I'm sorry. But, I, on, I, on, I, I, I have to say that Ms. No, DePisa, no. even with all her feelings, is still doing a better job. Um, is that, sorry, sorry ahead, Jenny, I need to ask this question. Go ahead, go ahead. We, are, we are having a debate here, and but are we are we showing our subjectivity here when when a horse says to me that I am running a bad campaign and the person who ran against me is doing a good job? I mean, there has to be a level of objectivity on your part because we have to be not able that to share, <laughs> share. We have to be able to share and I agree. I agree. Ideas. Not for me to come up against. Yeah, we, we're not here. Yeah, we, we don't invite the money for to get me shut up. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it, it, that that particular horse, right? But again, <laughs> what, what that that horse is a special special horse. Trust me. They no. What I'm we saying is that there is a lot of controversy around your particular um, campaign. It has nothing to do. Um, I and because when I read the comment, there's a lot of DLP people on here. And they're Baron always the one, and yeah, the Baron and the Lisa and all of these guys that on some I write all constantly back and forth. But I see a lot of uh, the, the I, I see, hold on, Kimar. I'm gonna mute you for a minute, Kimar. I'll mute when you're ready. I see a lot of I see a lot of the Democratic Labour Party because I don't I don't necessarily want to blame the Dem the Barbie Labour Party. Barbie Labour Party supporters will do what they have to do, but there's a lot of in-house rap. About you coming in from from you from the time you log on, people will say, "Are oh, here? Here, this one person, Verla, is a good or better than me." So there's there's some people questioning yours, your leadership against Verla. Your some people seen your stepping into the ring as an opportunity opportunist moment because Verla because election is drawing near, and if you get Verla, oh, no, you can might as well be the one to carry party to the election. So don't don't let me exclude the Barbados Labour Party for doing what the Barbados Labour Party will do no. or what the Democratic Labour Party will do if it flip. The controversy so, so, that I'm seeing is coming from within your party as right. it relates to your party okay. no, belief. No, no, let me let me okay. forget the Barbados Labour Party there, sir. No, 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 okay, let us pick up on that. Mm. We have an old saying in Barbados, nobody kicks the dead dog. People are, are coming. <laughs> Listen, I call the RCC for you. The point <laughs> yes. is, people are coming out to me if because it is contested. They mm. see that there is a real challenge. They see that the nation, that the callers, that the young people, that people who have fallen away are reacting to me. And people are seeing it as a threat. But this is a democratic process. So controversy, contestation in an election is a natural part of it. This is why when we go into an election mode in Barbados, a general election, things get hot and things are going to and can possibly get hotter still. But what we have to do is hold on to the decorum. There are some persons who support me, some who support the current president, and we must allow each set of group, uh, each group to be able to share and ventilate their ideas, their thoughts in a decent and respectful manner. 
I think people are. I think people are. I think people are doing that guy. But what I'm saying is, we've had George Pilgrim who ran against Verla de Pisa, uh, and it was and Kimar Stewart ran against um what the guy named Kimar for the um Henderson Williams and some others mm. in in general mm. secretary. He being one of the youngest general secretaries, I, I think across the the Caribbean, um in in political history. But the there, it, there, there's a there's a thing that that people are saying. Carry the party and has run several times. You like um, get interrupted, sir, Kimar. Sir, uh, hello, guy. Hello, you like oh, was interrupted. Oh, several times. Uh, several times he ran and he's proven himself. He's carried the deal, but quite labor party through the test of times. Guy, you yes. it. Oh, well, hold on, I'm just. No, no, no. But we have to clarify that when you say that, because you say that as an absolute fact. George has been general secretary, but George has, and that is that is a a coordination role. It has not been a fly carrying role. So, but, so when you say that, no, 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 uh, I need to make that point. George offered himself up for leadership last year, and that is a fact. George was never the president of the Democratic Party before. He has been a, a strong. I capable and I admire and commend all of what he gave to the DLP. But what I'm saying is you cannot say that George Pilgrim was a leader because no, no, George no, no. was always part of the party's infrastructure. Correct. I'm not saying listen, what I'm saying is based on when he ran for pres when he ran for the presidency, he had a proven track record that the party, not Barbados, forget Barbados that the party could have looked to and said, yes, this man would have carried the party. He would have helped carry the party around, if you want to put it that way. He was a proven track record. Okay. People knew George. People could uh, associate themselves with George. And one of the reasons I find that you may, and just let me respond, there's a guy here who's talking foolishness. You're completely clown. Right? But there is a reason, there is a reason, no. There, sorry, on your end, that people are seeing... Go Hewitt, if I may use this loosely, a drop out of the sky yeah. moment and for some of them, basically, run coming now as the prodigal son, as you will call it, want to return to claim the throne and take up the mantle yeah. of the party. Yeah. When, when, hold on, when they the party, and a lot of the young people or whatever may not know who Go Hewitt is, you understand? But here okay. comes Go yeah. okay. So that's what I'm saying. Let me stop. No, no. Okay. See, before you go any further, before you go any further. Hold on, Jeremy. Hold on, Jeremy. Let, no, let, let me just ask you a quick question. No, no, you can ask me. Hold on, Jeremy. No, no, no. Hold on. No, no, please. Go ahead, guys. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Jeremy, hold on. For, for six of the seven years, last year, I have not been in Barbados. For four of those years, I have been representing Barbados abroad. So when you ask me that people have not seen me on the ground, again, it, I, 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 am, I am just me. For six years, I have been in the UK. Yes, I've been home. Yes, I've gone to party conferences. But what I'm saying is I have not been on the ground because I have been abroad. So when you ask, now when you ask the question, and, and, and let me answer it for those who wonder. I ask it for those who For four not. years, I was in the UK. Asking in the UK as High Commissioner fighting for Beijing is out there. For the last two years, I have been working abroad, have been writing and communicating and participating. But do you, if you say to people, ask, where was I before? No, I was not here. Would I have liked to have been here? Of course I was. Do I feel that my presence is an imposition? No, I don't, because I feel I have the legit right as a member of the Democratic Labour Party, as somebody who has proven, because in the UK, I took on a prime minister, took on a government, raised money, organized teams, ran campaigns. I have the legitimacy to do this. Of course, I do. Fair enough. Fair I enough. want to raise a, a point here. In, uh, I think the challenge really is um, just listening to your, your arguments and following uh, the comments. It, it really strikes to me that persons are trying to find out, okay, you have all of this to offer, uh, but you don't intend to seek office in terms of a constituency, right? 
that just using your words being presumptuous. And it just being presumptuous, right? If you are saying, if you are saying, right, that you want to do all of these things, but still you place that restriction and limitation on yourself, then you might as well go and work for general secretary and do all of these things. Get because that is that what, what you're explaining to me is what the general secretary really and truly does. So you you and trying to say your argument, persons are saying, but they. Well, your prescription is not really a uh, president. Your prescription is really a truly general secretary. So we're not to your hat. We're not to your hat in the general secretary. Let me, let me answer. Let me, hold on. Let me answer that. Let me put you guys on mute, right? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Re regrettably, regrettably, um, and, and these are not, um, um, this is no fault of anyone because we are the personalities that we are. Regrettably, the current leadership of the party is not attracting and getting traction across the country. Yes, I could seek another office. I could seek vice president. I could seek general secretary. I could seek any other force. But the challenge is trying to mobilize what we need to go forward. And I'm going to speak specifically about fundraising. I have made a commitment, and you heard me say earlier this week, to be able within the first 100 days of my presidency, if I'm successful, to mobilize at least $250,000 for candidates. Now, how can I do that? Because people have a confidence in me. While I have been here, while I've been listening to people, people have tangibly said to me, this is what we are prepared to do with you. I have communicated that to the current president, not in a nasty or vicious way, but trying to explain to her the impediments that we face currently as a party without a leader who is able to move beyond George Street, across the nation, into the private sector, into households, and say to them, we hear you, we understand you, we feel you, and we can respond to your needs. If I, and as General uh, Secretary, hold on, that's hold not on, the role. Um, so, Guy, if I may ask you, I may, I may be being facetious here. Basically, you're trying to say the Democratic Liberal Party break. Because if, no, if then... I'm not saying that, but, but I, I mean, you're trying to raise... Two. This campaign funds, but every party raises funds, Kimar. Right. No, no, no. I'm just saying... I, 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 I want to ask a serious on, question. Jamie, I want to ask a serious question. Jamie, Jamie, hold on. I'm just saying, if you're saying that you would mobilize um, the, the 250,000 in the campaign, are you saying then, and let me, let me develop when I said the, the, the party would be back. I current, it currently has to mean then that the party does not have the finances it needs to go forward if on the, on the verdict, the piece of, to be able to I, raise the what funds I'm saying or, is, or what doesn't I'm have funds saying, to go forward. No, no. What I'm saying is I mm -hmm. have a confidence and a certainty that the, there are resources that are out there that I can bring in the party, but unfortunately, the people out there want to see a certain image, a certain vision, a certain, mm -hmm. a certain brand, and a certain way of leading projected out of that the, the That the current president does not have. I am saying to them, they are saying they feel I have it. It is not for me. To, no, to no, I mean, I mean, let, 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 us, not, let us not be rolling really the really bush. Let us not be rolling really no, the bush. If, if, not, person, again, if, the, if you are saying that these things do not, is not evident in your party right now, I'm not, it's not about gender or not. I am saying to you, it is not in your party right now. You are not seeing it. Hence the reason why you are heading for leadership. The people behind you, are not seeing it, hence the reason why they will support you. The funders that are probably probably willing to give you the funding are not seeing it. That's why they're willing to hold back the money. And if guy is in the chair, they're willing to give you. So clearly, the Democratic Labour Party leadership has to be called into question underneath Verde de Pisa because it shows that it is lacking all of what you just said because that is then why it is stalled at the, at the place it's stalled at right now. Yeah. It's called into question. Why you were standing up for the presidency? What I am saying to you is, as you are saying, I am You're coming forward. You're finding the diplomatic approach to it. People, 
people are He's a politician. Saying, this is what they see in me. It is not for me to make a determination about anyone else. I am saying this is what I have to offer. And there are people in the Democrat Labour Party, I am sure, that will come out and probably after that of this program and affirm that all of what I am saying I can do, others can do too. So it's not for me to make a determination about the other people's fit. That Great, is for you guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to so no, ask some questions. I've been trying to ask some questions. Man, for watch, you. I don't watch the end of this topic as yet. But you made a very important point just now, and that is about finances, right? I heard a clip with you on the radio suggesting that the government should be chided uh, for not passing integrity legislation, right? So I am asking you if you're willing to be a pioneer for integrity legislation and that this money that you're bringing into the party, can you provide us a framework for elected president as it relates to integrity, accepting champion finances, because would you are you willing no, to no, be that? No, 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 hold on, hold on, Kimon. Sorry, these are come two separate and completely different issues. Integrity legislation is about the the functioning and the conduct of public officials, and try to ensure that there's transparency, accountability, and governance. Campaign financing um, legislation is about trying to account for the money that comes into and passes through our political system. And our the absence of campaign financing legislation has not meant that our politics has lacked integrity. So I don't want us to confuse or conflate the two. I have said- We have committed Issues were barbarous. Ethics were called into question when one of our ministers were charged over in the US. So we'll have to disagree with you on that point. So uh, stop, stop again. What I'm saying is, and, and if you read it very carefully, there are some big holes in that whole process. And we're not getting into that discussion, and I would not take it any further. That is a process that is under appeal, and I am quietly optimistic that, that when bright light is shine on that all that went on in the dark is going to come out but let me say this integrity legislation can and has to do with trying to preserve the integrity of our public sector campaign financing is about how money passes through our political system i am saying to you yes integrity legislation is a must Campaign financing reform, we have to seriously look at it. But we need to understand the implications for that, which I said the other day. If we are saying that political parties or, or campaign contributions are going to be subject to public scrutiny, we have to understand what that will have the implications of that in terms of our democracy. So I said, and I said earlier this week, that if we take democracy like healthcare or education or anything as a public good, just like we invest money into our, our health, education, roads, whatever, we have to then decide what are we going to put into our democratic system. We currently give subventions to governments, to political parties who have seats. We give assistance to parliamentary representatives, but we have to then ask the question, do we need to do more? As y'all are saying earlier today, for young aspiring politicians or want to be representatives, what do we have to provide as a society to ensure that people are able to advance a political career without having to run to a godfather or a godmother and say, look, I need your help. And I feel that there must be, and I've seen in countries where they are able to put in campaign financing legislation and maintain a healthy and robust democracy. Someone, someone, is, asking, someone is asking where your $250,000 will be coming from. From, so if you're, from donors? Right, no, so no, you're no, talking no, about I, campaign I, financing. No, 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 again. Hold on, Jeremy. Are, no, I no, come, no, you know, Jeremy. Ask, no, I'm answering that question. Currently, yeah. there is no legislation and no. I will not hold any funders of my campaign or campaign that I am running to any standard that any other political party or the nation does not demand. 
if and when we get to that point, and we have to do it, it is not for one party to decide that because we have to talk to all political parties, but more importantly, we have to talk to taxpayers because it has implications for what the, what the taxpayers are willing to invest wow. in our democratic system to make sure it but, is robust. But the question still remains, obviously in most cases when people campaign finance, it, it is it's a thought, a school of thought that when people campaign finance, they want something in return. So you're saying that you're going to these donors well, me, for money. Are they not going to get something in return if you would become prime minister in the next general actually, election? Actually, actually, and I would say this to you, what they will get is the best leadership I can offer. And I, as I said, and you heard it on the news this morning, integrity for me is not a word. It is a way of life. So anybody who thinks that they can bring money to me with strings attached, I can tell them can't buy them. Okay. That's Jeremy. not me, and that's not the politics. Okay, Jeremy, go ahead. You are All right, um, so, 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 Reverend Hewitt, um, I, 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 I don't want to hear my personal views here because then people are going to say that I am being biased and all of that. There's a few clown talkers. So, if I could say, if you can air them structure objectively, yeah. then we can have a meaningful discussion. Go okay. Ahead, okay, all right, good. So. The, the, the first question I want to ask you, I have a few questions to you. The first question I want to ask you, you're talking about um, this possible fundraising and, you know, you've talked, you, you're venturing into integrity legislation, a lot of things which, in my view, fall in the foray of governance. governance. And I, I, I just cast my mind back to the fact that the Democratic Labour Party was just in power for 10 years and refused to pass the very same integrity legislation. But that's another discussion for another day. If you and I would say that's discussion for another group of persons. Okay, if you lose the um the the the, the presidency um to Mrs. De Pisa this year, all right? Um, mm -hmm. are you willing to still maintain the same level of support one for Mrs. De Pisa as the president of the Democratic Labour Party and number two for the Democratic Labour Party as an institution? My, my, my commitment to the Democratic Party as an institution will be unswerving. I will always be able to guarantee I give it there. So, so the, 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 the members of the Democratic Party, because on, when, I'm look, when I look at the comments, there are a lot of people who are not convinced by you, right? Now, I, I, I will be honest and say to you that I myself am not also convinced by you, but I am on the other side. So my opinion really doesn't matter. Right, but the, the reality is that we do want to see an effective opposition voice being heard in Barbados. I think mm -hmm. that is something that anyone in any country wants. But you know, when I, when I hear when, when, like you no, know, the first thing that strikes me with you, Mister um, well, Reverend Hewitt, because I want want to call you by where you're your Reverend. Um, about four or five weeks ago, I remember specifically hearing you saying or reading you saying in the newspaper. Um, that you were not interested in running for the presidency of the Democratic Labour Party. And, you know... I, 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 that question already, Jeremy. No, 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 no. Move on to the next again? question. Okay, great. Move on to the next question, Jeremy. Okay, so, so we, we get that you're, that you're not there, but I, 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 I want to make the point, and, and this is more probably not a question. I, I personally think that you need to as you say, hit the tar with your people. Um, you cannot appear to be someone jumping in at the blink of, of an opportunity. Um, it leaves a lot of questions to be answered and probably leaves a bitter taste in the mouths of, in the mouths of one, those people who you are seeking to convince and even those who probably may not support you. Um, you know, the, the Democratic Labour Party as an institution took a loss in 2018. And they didn't take a loss in 2018 because the people of Barbados just got up one day and decided that they were going to vote with the Democratic Labour Party. The people of Barbados were frustrated with the lack of leadership and the lack of direction that that government led by the Democratic Labour Party was given to this country. And, you know, whilst it may not have been the greatest leadership now, as I said before, Mrs. De Pisa came in and she has tried. And now, and you, you talk about women in politics, you want to see more women in politics. And I know you addressed this earlier. 
But the reality is that Mrs. De Pisa, as a woman, stood up. And now you and I don't know who are the other members whom are supporting you, but you are now you are always attacking Mrs. De Pisa. And you know, I'm sad to say, but it comes oh, across start, as a gender so, issue. Can I speak? Can I interrupt here? Because again, this notion of my attacking um, the president is erroneous because I, there have been no attacks made by me and anybody who says that, I would tell them, point out where they're made. And I want to also say this, and, and you, have, you have revealed and you have communicated your colors. And I have taken, I have been intrigued by the way in which, as you say, persons on the other side have been so vociferous in support of my, my, my colleague. And, and I do not think it is coincidental that, that members of the other side are holding to this hard line that we have to do right. And there are people out there that find this disingenuous. The reality is we are in, engaged in an annual competitive democratic process. Um, and they, the, I, the, the, the constitution changes and we suspend annual elections or elections in the run up to general election. This is part of our democracy and it always has been. Yeah. It has not uh, been I, personal and it is not personal for me. Kimar, you got yeah. a, a question from uh, Wayne um, here. And it is a very interesting yeah. question. That is why we, well, not question, see the statement rather, this is why we need to change our elect process. I don't know if you, you're actually talking about party election or, or if you're talking about election, but um, one of the things that guys on there, the question would be then if I can, if I can re, um, shape that question, would be, are you willing to change the democratic process of how they select candidates? Because currently I, yeah. your candidates are selected from um, from that of the branch, um, branch, and then up to the executive. Am I correct, right, gentlemen? Branch and um, up. Before you go on, hmm. um, well, I don't want to speak for good, right? I wanted to answer the I, I wanted to answer the question, but um, this is which question? This same one, or this is a separate question? Right. All right. I, I, I can just make the point quick. Okay. Um, first, I don't think that is fair uh, to really call guy opportunists and why you say that especially coming from Germany uh, because think back the, the BLP had leadership squabbles that played out in the middle of the road for everybody to see the O and for me a motley squabble was not a nice one uh, so I, I mean that's not fair and then on top of that in the DLP we had leadership challenges we had leadership challenges all the time uh, the closest one to back would have been Clay Masco and David Thompson. And I supported David Thompson. I, I like David Thompson. Um, I sure many other people like David Thompson as well. And, and David put his hat back in the ring at that time. And he became and he became um, prime, prime minister. If it was fair or not to do so, that is a whole another question. That, as the stalwarts say all the time that politics is not Sunday school. I had my bad experience uh, in understanding that politics was not Sunday school and that a vote went, votes go against people, votes went against me, right? Uh, so if you are in a, a democratic race and somebody put the name in your race at the last minute, like I say, that's the person, right? The person can't put themselves there. It is the members of the organization who will vote for guy. And it is an insult to voting members of the DLP that you try to tell people how to think or how to perceive anybody who come up for leadership. Everybody who support Verla, the people know Verla have to offer and have to offer. And as she deserves the vote, she's going to get it and she will go on to do good things. If guy deserves to get the vote, he can get it and go on to do uh good things right? right so that's the point oh, the question that you ask right the question that you asked really uh the process as a realistic candidate selection change and the party the party has a batch process where members who are interested in representing the party will write to the batch and the batch will then proceed to interview that person right after the interview and the recommendation from the batch, which then goes to the executive, they then 
basically deliberate and treat you to understand the branches thinking and what's not and if it lives up to, is to the smell test the candidate will pass and then go to general counsel to be basically seconded or approved right so it is not a, a process where you suffer to describe it that nobody pick you and hand pick you and put you in the seat there's a three-step process that was explained before a bit, but no for what i for what i understand is that obviously that branch the branch member the branch is the branch is it the branch executive that select your branch members well branch, um special committee or like special executive. correct so what special, i'm saying special, is um committee within the branch that does that right like unlike the barbers labor party the process is where you are you have a nomination you you have a nomination period and the branch members within that particular branch could select the candidate and then national council will, will, will ratify the person. So I'm asking a two part question here, Guy. If you, I'm just trying to get into your um, head as it relates to how you would steer the ship different from Verla. Would you seek to change or leave the, the process of how candidates are select? And also, will you seek to run back former or old, rather we call them the, the, the new terminology, old guards? of the Democratic Labour Party um, in your candidates, uh, as you can select your candidates. I'm just trying to feel how you would do no, it. No, 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 a couple of things. One, again, this there's a constitution in the party. So it is not, I don't believe it is for any leader, whomever he or she may be, to determine what a process, what a process is, should or should not be. There, it is, it is through a discussion, through review, through debate, through consensus building that you come to these processes. And I assume that the processes that are in place were agreed on and, and what you are asking is, if we find that they are not effective, they can be reviewed and they can be possibly changed. But it's not something that I feel that, that needs change, you know, or that I need to impose myself over. Regarding the, 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 candidates going forward from constituencies. Again, this is a democratic process. And if a branch and an executive comes to the conclusion that a former member of parliament is, is appropriate to serve, then as a member of a democratic institution, I will support it and stand by it. It's not about personal feelings. Yes, we can have a personal position on an issue or a person or a process. But ultimately, we have to be willing to submit ourselves to a democratic process of going through due process and abiding by the decision that is taken. All right. I, I just had a question um, for you, Guy, because um, mm. I got to say that you would have been feeding a lot of questions just now and so on. But with regards to what you would want to bring, I think the, the real reason why a lot of people tune in tonight is just to get an idea of like it is three things that you would want to do i know you mentioned fundraising so we, we know that's a big part what are two or three other main things that you okay. would want to see happen let, uh, let me if see you are right. selected as president okay there's critical things we need to do we need to give the DLP an effective voice. That means that we have to be firing on all cylinders. We must have a website. We must have social media accounts. They must be active. They must be updated. We should be, again, as we used to have in the past, an article that comes out written by members of the Democratic Labour Party, whether sports persons or the executive, that people can look forward to, that speaks to what the DLP's views are. So there is about effective voice. We have to get e election ready. So we have to get the branding. We have to get resources for, for to help um, um, the candidates. We have to organize mass meetings. We have to do mass canvassing to really let people know that this party is alive and well. But what we also have to do is strengthen our internal communications. We need to make sure that the branch meetings that are supposed to be held are held, that the WhatsApp groups that are there are functioning, that people are on it, that we write and send out correspondence to all members, that membership lists with numbers and addresses are readily available. These are not secretive. 
we must be able to communicate effectively. And most importantly, we have to plan for the future. So we have to go to our young people. We have to get into schools. We have to get the Academy of Politics going together. We have to make sure that the young Democrats are visible and viable as a separate entity to speak to and mobilize young people. And as I've been saying all along, we need to support and ensure a critical mass of women in our representative politics. Well, some people may be saying that this is all is you know repetitiveness because it is a voice of a typical politician they make these promises and they what they would like to see but what people are not seeing is the how you know you say that okay you will you would like to see young people but how would you bring young people you like to say you will see a gender balance but what would you do to have gender balance you say that you will like it so obviously time people tend to be more yeah. um no, 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 let me ask the question no, let me ask the question. How well, much ask me a question, go ahead. Because, no, no, I'm asking how much time do we have tonight? Because if we want to get into the minutia, we've got to give ourselves But, but the minutia is what people want to hear now rather than... I know about, but, but, okay, so what we need to do, and let me say this, and I'm willing to do it, because I think we set ourselves a time. I'm happy to come back again. And if I'll you want up. me to go into the details yes. of what a guy to presidency would focus on, Happy to we, do that. Well, you have a manifesto, Mr. Hill. Kimar, if possible, you might want to have a program where you have both of the options the Democrat and the Labour Party. Yeah, I would like to know you if Guy would, would have a manifesto as well. Guy, will you have a manifesto I, coming out? Yes, I do have one coming out. It will be it will be in circulation before the end of the week. So is it, the is it going to be a circulation in George Street? Is it going to be a, is it going to be entitled a new dawn for uh, democracy? As I'm seeing behind oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. that, that, is, that is my platform. It's about newness, about starting fresh, drawing okay. fresh. The, the question yeah. I have to ask as well, another question that's came too for me, is that people want to understand and also for you to give a track record when you were the chairman of the QEH and oh, the business development uh, officer of CXC. People say they would like to hear your chat record because they have heard you. And there's, again, people, some people are saying that they have heard little to nothing about you. But if person did not know, you were once the QEH um, chairman. And also, you were a development officer with the CXC. If I'm, I do it, I correct, I'm correcting both of those. No, I was. I was a director of Caribbean Examinations Council. Director, my formal apology. Um, and I was chairman. I was chairman of the board of the of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Again, gentlemen, that is not something that we can touch or delve into in in a moment. I, do you to want to give us a two minutes? A two minutes of your achievement. Some of the things that you okay, did. I don't think. It, I don't think it's far. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So. Um, as chairman of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, what we did was we recruited um, new and qualified leadership to take the, the institution forward. Mm -hmm. We put in a, a brand new power system that ensured that there was power to run the Queen Elizabeth Hospital at all times. And I say that having driven past or one night past in QH to find the institution in complete and utter darkness. What year we, was this? What year was this? The 40, 40, 40 day? We, we did electrical upgrade. I, I can't give you okay. the, 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 the month, but we did a full electrical upgrade of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. We were able, when the consultants sought to, and I say this, go on strike, and I make it, no apologies about it, to get the title deeds for the QEH, I said, no way. And we held the hospital for the people of Barbados. The doctors, the consultants went on strike and we held the line that the hospital belonged to the people and we were not going to surrender it. And that to me was a significant accomplishment because it said to the people of Barbados, they had a board and representation that they could count on and would deliver for them. Can I reply to you? But, but, hold on. I just want to find out, um, do you remember what year it is that you would have fixed the power outage at the QEH? 
I don't, I honestly, at my age, I don't have all those details on the top of my head, but I would say to you, because I went to London in 2014, it would have happened probably 2012, 2013. But well, if you go around, around Jeremy, hold on, Jeremy. Hold on. Mm. If you go around the map of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital now, you will see all of the infrastructure that put in the new generators. The well, the reason why I asked the question is if you're, and I asked the question on, on time, is because while well, you're stating that in 2012, you all would have made that significant um, electrical upgrade in, 20, in 2016, there was a massive outage that had left several wards five hours out um, on main blocks. Uh, at the hospital, so that's I was what I'm, not, I'm checking your, not, your no, 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 I am saying I was not, I was in London at that time. I can't mm. take any responsibility and can't account for that. Right, no, I'm just saying that you made an upgrade as a, one of your achievements, so I'm just looking at the fact that you're saying that you made an achievement. I, I, would, upgrade. I would say to you... Then, but yeah, there was a massive power outage, so I just wanted uh, to know what type of no, upgrade No, I am saying is. to you, just check and see what caused the power outage. I can't speak to that, but I'm sure mm. that it was not probably a cause of the upgrade. But check okay. on it. Okay, no, 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 Reverend Hewitt. Um, I, I, I want to speak specifically to the issue of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, and I'll tell you the reason why. Um, up until around November last year, I was a very frequent user of that facility, right? right? Mm -hmm. And I can say without a doubt that I have been in the hospital once a week from the time I was 11 years old. So I know when good works were being done and when bad works were being done. I'm going to put it to you right now that between the period of 2008 and 2018, and even um, more so in the period when you were the chairman of that hospital, there were times that persons, that nurses on wards in the QEH did not have simple um, the, the needles that you, in, that you stick people to, to test their blood sugar. I remember being on a ward evening. And oh. seeing person, hold on, Kimar. You hold yeah. on. I mean, you can't be using the show to come and do this political grandstanding all the time. It's not grandstanding. But you gotta say something about this because you you using the show every minute to campaign and show you pom poms with the BLP, right? Those things, those things that you are mentioning in particular, talking about needles, uh, them things, operational issues, right? And as far as I know, Jermaine, you can't see to blame guy in particular for that. But the overarching point here is that I want to encourage you to ask questions void of your partisanship to make a discussion way more interesting. You, you could do that for me, please. Ulu Wano, if you run it, you, Ulu Wano, if you run it for next election. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> That's Jermaine, but, but guys, but, but, forgive, but, but, forgive to be Jeremy. Fair, to be fair, um, Reverend mm. Hewitt, you, you, you made, um, you, you made the, the, the QEH as one of your accomplishments, right? And I think that if you are listing it as one of your accomplishments, then some person who has had to be in that hospital and see the bad service which was received previously in that hospital should have the opportunity to speak. I mean, you have, one of your co-hosts has, has spoken to this issue already. And I don't think I need to engage it because Kemar has spoken to it. And I think his answer and his counter to you is most appropriate answer to it. So I, I will step away from it and I will probably ask him to state again what he said in case you didn't hear it. If, if, I, if I could go back to though, if I could go back to the achievement and the stewardship, uh, Mr. Hewitt, I'm just going again. On, we speak about the hospital, and I, asked, I spoke about the directorship at the, the, at the CXC, which you would have corrected. But again, I like to look at when people are, when we are looking at uh, how do we go forward, we're looking at who do we put to lead these parties and what's not. But in an, in an article, and I do a lot of research, in an article that came out uh, in May 13th, it would have spoken to Guy Hewitt being fired as director of the CXC. Uh, of CXC, right? And so does this, does this particular uh, situation speak to poor that matter, leadership that, that, or that is it? Matter, good, uh, sorry, that matter has been resolved um, in a process that I am not able to discuss publicly. Okay, fair. Now, I'm just questioning leadership as people look at no, it. No, no, and, and, it and it's a public, and it, please know it's a public record that I would have Google your name and phone. So it I'm is, just saying. It is, a, it, is a, it is a public article. Article, sorry. 
Exactly. And that matter has been resolved um, legally. So, and, and because we are not going through a medium that allows me to get any further funding for my campaign, it, it, I would just leave that to go down the street. But, but that's right. okay. I mean, so yeah, go ahead. Okay, but, fair uh, enough. I, I Any think... last questions as we look to wind down short? We had guy on for two hours and we don't want to keep yeah, him we did. any longer than um, he needs to be. I, I think I think for a person that uh, was once a member of the Democratic Labour Party, any democratic process is important. And I, I do believe that the challenge would be for you, Guy, to mobilize those persons within the Democratic Labour Party to come out and support you. And that would be the same mm -hmm. challenge for um, Verona de Pisa to get her supporters to come out and to give her that support that is necessary. I think that what the island, what, what the nation Barbados is looking at is- I think said Verla is on. What state, so the night to her, if she, if she is. Wonderful, wonderful. The, the, I think the real question that is in the nation is that after this next annual conference, um, will the Democratic Labour Party be in a, a stronger position? And would, would you believe that it would be on a better footing to be a credible opposition and a government in waiting. I think that is what people really are, are concerned about. And Simon, let me say to you, that is what I am working towards wholeheartedly. That is the reason for my being involved in this process. I, we, I, I am not willing to take a chance on our democracy. I feel that there are things that need to be done and I am willing to step up and step out to be part of a new dawn for democracy in Barbados. Well, any other questions from anybody? Yeah, I just, oh, do you have an uh, economic team, by the way? I do. You have, a you have a title for a job, Kimar? That's me doing, Kimar. <laughs> uh, guy, guy, I must ask though, is there any young people on your economic team? Yes, there are. What, what do you consider young guy? What do you consider? Not young at heart, or young at how you think and how you feel. Are you talking 40? about you on the 40s? Of course. Of okay. Course. I just asked. I just mean, I just, I just pull it no, straight. But the point is that, I know, but the thing is, but what we also, and I want to say this, everybody keeps talking about the economic, and I understand why, but we need also to ask ourselves, and especially when we are dealing with serious issues with our young males, and with crime and deviance and drug use and drug lords. What about our social teams? Yeah, what are the social one. teams that we put together? We keep talking about, and there was an important point made by the Democrat Labour Party. Barbados is not just an economy, it's a society. And if, we don't, attend, if we don't attend to the social issues alongside the economic, we are going to run ourselves into serious problems at the community and at the household level. And this is why I'm saying I'm not, so I answer that. Yes, there's an economic team and we will, we have to, and one of the things that under leadership, we have to provide viable economic alternatives to what the current regime is offering. But what I'm saying is at the same time, we cannot lose sight of the moral and ethical and social decay that is taking place in Barbados. But, but, but are, we, are we looking at, are we quick to, and I find that most politicians or aspiring politicians are quick to, especially on the opposition and both who, who have explained the string of opposition, we like to look at the what the, the current administration is doing and kind of hit it out to the ballpark without first mm -hmm. uh, 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 analyzing it to see if, there's something no, that let, can be done and, some, and something okay, that can be to join out. Yeah. We like, you know, I, I understand we Ooh. play opposition, um, but at the same time, I find that we don't really play fair, fair in the sense that there are some programs that the government has been looking to, like this block, the block program that has been working especially, uh, certainly well in the constituency. Um, and I've seen that. I've also seen a number of initiatives to reach youth um, I, I'm, I'm not a big supporter of concerts. I'm not a big supporter of consultation seminars, which, you know, I feel that over the years we've had to talk shop rather than do shops. So, but there are things that both administration did that you can say kudos to a checklist. They did well. There are some things that you fault, you can recheck, you can revisit. But I find that as opposition, too much time we play, hit the ball out the park. And the biggest failure for a lot of governments 
and one of the biggest failures I found in the Democratic Labour Party at the time was that it failed to mobilize around civil society organizations, especially where civil society organizations were already on the ground, were doing so much, were already involved in community, um, in the people's life, were already thinking, and we tend to, time and time, figure that politicians have the answers because they're the one being elected or they already get um, the fact that they have to work with people and work with society. And that is where we find that the biggest failure or why is why governments always, always successful government always have failure because of that neglect in this in this in the as it correctly put it put by you the social aspect of the social organizations that are but, doing their job. I mean Kima, I would say this to you. I mean one of the things that can and I feel could it could be done and we should not create any rancor is as you are saying while we have the social partnerships, and it's currently a tripartite arrangement. I don't want sure, social partnership. No, 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 hold on, hold on, no, no. One thing is, but there has to be a structure. When you have mechanisms for people to come to the table, then people start to take you seriously. So what I'm saying is civil society needs to be able, needs to be recognized as an important social partner. I want to say this to you as well. I think Barbados has had a very good tradition of different political parties coming in and continuing good programs that they have inherited. And that to me has been a function of a very stable, a very stable civil service. We can improve on our civil servants and we can find more way, ways to make them more effective. But I think one of the things as you are saying is not to politicize the delivery of goods and services to people. And we have to get away from this culture that politicians want the electorate to feel that everything governments do is done by them and that their name must be up on every banner or plaque or anything. It is about doing things for the people of Barbados in an inclusive and effective manner. But many times, but many times they take away they, many times they take away your ideas, your proposals, and, and just brand it with their and just brand it as they did it. Exactly. And, and that and because, that has been the biggest challenge I've seen. And, and because I have a background in civil society, I find it unconscionable. I, I yeah, find it unconscionable. You, you're you're in most ministries. You're quite you're 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 competing with government for for funding, almost to do the same thing. And yeah, that yeah. has been because that is, in my opinion, has been one of the ways where money has been wasted in this country. You have you would have several societies dealing with with, for example, cancer, but five of them belongs to government too belongs to the civil society do it does it need to be repetitive it don't need to because in most cases it's, fo it's focusing on the same thing and the side two will come to the same government for funding and so i find that right at amalgamating services we are duplicating services but this is one of the ways government for years have been abusing funds and but we and, need to move it around but we need to rationalize as you say the use of of the provision of services i mean we have just seen recently the, the, the GIS get duplicated, and, and again, for political purposes. And we have to avoid that because we have to realize that the government or the, the, the ministries are there to deliver goods in an objective and efficient manner, not to help governments get reelected. If they do their job well, re-election should come. But it should not be that you use the resources of the state to try to guarantee that you are going to get what you want or that you try to obliterate somebody else. And, and I want to pick up that point though that you made about opposition parties or oppositions um, want to hit at what the government is doing. That is the role of opposition. It is, the, and that's why, that's why it's called the loyal opposition because there is a, a, there is a constitutional requirement for you or expectation that you will hold the government's feet to the fire. But there are some things that we have been talking about in Barbados for too long, like we talk about the need to restructure the economy, to make it create spaces for young people and entrepreneurs and these things. And, and government after government has fallen down on that. And so we have to be serious now in the 21st century, and especially in a situation where we find ourselves in the same woeful economic situation we were in not too long ago to find new ways of doing things and delivering goods and services and providing opportunities for young people. So I'm a, support, I'm a supporter of, government, of people we hold in government account, whether you be opposition or whether it be, yes, people, exactly. or whether it be the people itself. 
But what right. and, and, and we could have seen that from Olu videos or whatever the case may be. Okay. But what I'm saying is that sometimes we play politics with people. Oh, I please. find that whether yeah. be politician or right, we can't play part. Now, if a government is doing something wrong, it's best to cut the rhetoric, come with what the government show the people. Okay, the the let's say there may not be, for example, I may say there may not be the bus. We give a constructive criticism on the fact that there's no bus and it's affecting commuters. But however, you find that you will say in opposition, I the Democratic Labour Party can do it better, or if in opposition, I the BLP can do it better. But there is no clear um, outline of how better you will do it, and we, we and and we you know, the plan is not there, and that know, is what we feel. Can I come back to the point you made about people stealing your ideas? Yeah. Because this is part of the problem. When you go to government and say to them, this is wrong, as you are saying for civil society, do this better. Before you know it, your plan is being executed, no credit given to you, and it, it can sometimes work against your interests. And that is how it is with even oppositional politics. Because if you give all the, the government the blueprint towards being more effective, you are guaranteed to stay in opposition. So at the end of the day, there is a vested interest and a legitimate need to oppose and sometimes keep your cards close to your chest. Uh, yeah, I can yeah, understand that. Go ahead. Um, right. right. I want to ask you two questions. We're done in a couple of minutes. Huh? Yeah. yeah. I, I wanted to ask you um, what what are your feelings about the IMF? And I wanted to ask you, and this is stemming from a comment that you made, not in this forum, but another forum that. Uh, the DLP had a tendency to be, and you say misogynist, misogynist. Um, so are you some? Yeah. No, no, some, okay, yeah. yeah. Wait, wait, uh, wait. So uh, you okay. use a couple of other terms, but I wanted to ask you, how do you feel as a weather, uh, uh, as a man coming into politics on the pulpit? Obviously, people are going to have uh, some concerns about your uh, philosophies as it relates to governance. So you as a reverend, how would you tackle the issue of the LGBT and the movement and the legislation and what, what's not? What I would say is, I believe that we, the 21st century must be an inclusive society. And we have to find every way to make everybody feel that they are a valued member of our society. On, in terms of specific programs and policies, I have my personal positions, but my personal positions are not necessarily going to become or, or determine policy. What we have to do through a process of consultation and, and through democratic consideration is work out what is most effective. Right. And so I would say to you, in terms of the LGBT um, issue, I will I speak to and have an inclusive agenda. Easy, straightforward. Yeah, on the IMF, the IMF, how do you feel about the IMF? Okay, the IMF, it seems to be at this point a necessary evil. It is allowing us to stabilize and move forward. But what I have a concern with at this point in time is the level of government foreign borrowing. We are borrowing a lot of money. We are talking about foreign reserves, but it's all being borrowed. And our debt to GDP ratio has gone through the roof again. And that is going to be a burden for somebody <laughs> to have to deal with. We've, we've, been, we've been here before. And I'm not going to get back to the class. But the challenge is we are here again. We have to get beyond the IMF. We have to use this opportunity of COVID-19 to ask some hard questions about us as a society and as an economy and decide how are we going to move forward in a way that allows us to be economically and financially sustainable. Okay. Any other questions, gentlemen, before we wrap up? And let me see if there's any kind of comments from... For me, uh, there's, take... nothing, there's nothing else to ask. Um, I've basically heard everything that Reverend Hill has to say. I respect his right to... Oh, no. Sorry. Sorry. There was a question about me and pol um, church and politics. Oh, okay. Somebody... Yeah. Go ahead, let me man. just say that. I, I believe that my, my religious foundation will equip me morally and ethically to discharge any duty or any role I have with efficiency and with a level of integrity. 
I don't, I don't see it. This is not the imposition of church on state. I don't subscribe to theocracy. So what I believe is that what I can see is certain fun underlying principles of faith informing how I work and how I serve. Sorry. Okay. All right, Jeremy, you had a wrap up. No, I was I was saying that I um I I I respected um Reverend Hewitt's um right to run. Um, you know, it had it, it I believe it will be a very interesting race. Um, as they like to say, may the better man or woman wins. Um, and the reality is that I think all of us in Barbados, we want to see the Democratic Labour Party um, re-emerge as a force that can be reckoned with. Um, Reverend Hewitt, I have said... You I sure? Have you sure? You sure about that statement? No, I don't know. That, I, I can that, speak. That's a Freudian slip. That's a Freudian slip from Jeremy. <laughs> 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 Because I look forward to seeing y'all back in opposition comfortably. Well, oh, well, 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 I will say this to you. Um, I do a lot of praying here, Pastor. You, you you have to do you have to do what you have to do, but I, I have stated on record and I've stated it publicly that I think you're going about the whole process wrong. And there is not, there is you have to reiterate that is your choice. Right. The 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 well Reverend. It's been a good run. I could not read the over. Um, how much there are almost 350 something comments. I can tell you for sure that there are some people that are for you. Um, there aren't many on the chatter. And there are some people that are still seeking some questions. There's some that believe that you have a good way of tiptoeing around the questions. But nevertheless, they thought it was a good discussion. There were some that were playing a little bit of idiot role. Um, they were getting a bit too. And it's called democracy. Oh, no, I don't call it democracy. I call it stupidity. You you have to be because <laughs> democracy. Them, leave them. No, no, democracy is a fair, yeah, yeah. democracy is where you have a fair and balanced comment, as you said, but not one when people are putting out salacious comments on the no. um deal. You know, I don't right. find that. I don't find that freedom. Of, I find that freedom of stupidity, and they <laughs> lack to know what they're talking about, so they just put whatever come to their fingertip. But nevertheless. Problem. Uh, we had a good show. Um, yeah. Reverend, is there anything? Um, there's one question I have to ask, and I think that everybody's probably on standby. If you lose the presidency back to Verla de Pisa, will you support her? Will you? The party, and, and the party and its leadership can always come on my support. Correct. So, I want to, and if I can end, as I said, we all talked about you all wanted the integrity of my manifesto. Once it becomes available, I will send it to you all. And if you all want an opportunity for me to get into that and re 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 review that in detail, I will happily be available. But I want to thank you all. I want to thank you all for this opportunity to be with you all and sharing with your viewers. Um, it is wonderful to see robust debate take place in Barbados, especially being led by younger generations. I don't want to say young because I guess- So Simon is here, we understand, we understand. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but no, honestly, it is a testimony to our healthy democracy and to our young people that y'all are doing this. So thank you for having me. And I, I wish every blessing to your program, to Barbados, to our viewers. Well, um, we, we, we right. so we, we, we definitely, Thank you for giving us. It's always good when we can see we, we can our our wrap leaders. We're going to wrap up like two seconds or so. Are you shutting up? You wanted to say something? Go ahead. Yeah, all right. I just wanted to thank uh, the viewers for the participation. Um, thank you, Guy, for coming on. Um, in my humble opinion, you're back fairly well. Now, uh, remember before oh, the... Oh, please. Somebody like, was bare close. Uh, remember before we came on the live, you were speaking about cricket. And what sort of stance you're taking? And you told me you're not backing like, like Larry, you coming out, you know, a guy. <laughs> so let's thank you for coming on. Um, this level of scrutiny on any person seeking political office really is a pleasure for us young people. Uh, regardless what some people may think after listening to German, this is not a political show. <laughs> so we ask, <laughs> we ask questions. <laughs> we ask questions. <laughs> 
right. <laughs> but, it, but we do want political opinions. Yeah. That's right. Uh, we, we do want questions. questions. And we like, so we, we asked those hard questions. Uh, we asked uh, modern day topics. Uh, we asked the things that younger generations who have to basically um, live under the leadership of these potential uh, leaders. Uh, these are these are issues that that burn us. And for Guy to open himself, and for any other person who would have come and open himself uh, to the show, we just want to express that you should that you should and say thanks, and hope that if you if you win, that you don't get you know big and run off and will not come back to debrief. So again, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, so um, so when you want to wrap up with anything? Um, basically, that I I, I do believe that the, the whole process of um, democratically contesting the leadership, the presidency and the Democratic Labour Party is all part of the democratic process. Um, for me, I think that what um, Barbados is looking at is how the party will fear after the selection, whether they go with Verla or whether they go with um, Guy. I think that coming out of this next annual conference, there will be a lot of eyes on the Democratic Labour Party and the whole fact that there's an upcoming election, Bajans would want to know that there is an alternative party that has mm -hmm. some kind of views, that has a, a track record that speaks to good service over the years and that could actually help Barbados. So I think that this, none of us, none of us can underestimate um, the impact of this upcoming internal um, election for presidency within the DLP. It's going to set the tone for elections. It's going to set the tone for the way forward for the party. Right. And, and um, my part of it, um, I, I think that the most important part as anybody's looking for in politics, especially as it geared towards the Democratic Party, would be to definitely look at what you guys have to offer as in terms of candidate selection. Mm -hmm. Candidate selection is going to be critical when people are looking at the party. And I do agree with your sentiment. And we, I, do, I, do, I if you don't believe me, go back to the last show we had with Verla de Pisa, that I believe that the Democratic Labour Party is not out the ballpark as it relates to um, the, the race in the election. And I believe that it should be hitting the ground all now. Don't tell me about you holding candidates at the last minute of no race, about who's who and who's what. Uh, people in the... Let them all go. People in the civil society that are running was known to be funny wrong. They didn't care about the job. They got out there because they want to serve the people. Whether or not you're a high flyer, whatever, low flyer, whatever you tell yourself, I think it's time the party get out there and start to do what it has to do and everything like that. So you have to be able to get out there. One of the questions, my last question, Mr. Huey, is that I would like to see if it can be facilitated by us at the debrief, you will leave off Jermaine for all reasons <laughs> of possible. I would love to see that yourself and um, Verda De Peter have a debate on yes. how you tend to take the party. And um, because I, the reason why I asked for that debate, and we will be willing to facilitate it at one of our locations or whatever the case may be, and have it um, be the tape live uh, with our partners um, on this today, stream live, and then are some of our other partners in the Caribbean would be to look at that part. Obviously, they believe that that particular person that wins the next the, um, presidency rule will be the person to take your party into elections, um, into general elections. So I would like to see if there can be a debate. So it's some structure question. I've heard a, no host a number of debates in the last um, election, which included all the, all the parties, every single party debated um, in my last debates. Um, both on youth, or both on NGO matters. So I would love to see uh, you guys have a debate mm -hmm. on how this, if you are open to that, um, we can contact Ms. DePees and we can see if we can have a runoff later down in the month, just to see where you guys vision. I don't know if other people may pop into the race because I'm also hearing other names. Well, so if I mean, that is... Saying, if, we can, if we can come, if we, yeah, if we can come to a consensus on that, I mean, I know that, that persons within the party have a, a different view. They would like this to be held internally or externally. But what I'm saying is, I believe in democracy and part of the democratic process is for people to hear what people have to say. So however we have it and wherever we have it, I look forward to it taking place. Well, that's good. So we only have one less person to worry about because I, I agree with you. Now, once you're coming to the public and once you're coming to the people, 
whether or not people are going to hit hard or soft, and I heard you said it on the call and show you are, you have to avail yourself to the position where people are going to scrutinize you based on what you stand for, what you believe, and where you want to lead this country because you are not leading your household. You're seeking to lead a country. And when you're seeking to lead a country, you have to answer to the country and also those that may be for and against. So we look forward to that debate and seeing how a debrief debate with you guys to see how and what you think. For you, those who don't support you, you have to represent them. Mr. Yeah, right. I just have one, one final question. Um, so I, 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 I actually look forward to the Oh, sorry. I actually look forward to the um, debate. Um, I just want to know, because someone told me to ask it here, which um, branch is um, officially nominating you to run for president? There's a branch that that officially. Is long, that is too long a discussion to have, and it's not one for public discussion. When the, when the nominations have been received, the public will know. But that's an internal process. Fair enough. All okay. right. With all due respect, thank you very much uh, for all those who commented. Some of you were... A yes, bit over the top, but we always know what to expect when the D's are commenting. And we want to thank you for your comments. Um, Mr. Hewitt, Reverend Hewitt, thank you very much. We appreciate you spending time with us. Facebook, we are going to leave you. Have a good night. Follow the protocols. And we are on YouTube as well. So follow the Debrief TV show on YouTube. Uh, like us, follow us. We do have over 70,000 views every single month. So that means this show is a growing trend. And we thank you for it. And thank you because before all of you, we would not be where we are right so thank you Cameron. all you guys thank, thank you, you very much thank you very much we're stopping the live now have a blessed one for night follow the covid protocol and stay safe for the hurricane season